Letterkenny debuts a year ago. You've already been greenlit for a third season. When you first sat down here, we were talking about friends of mine in, in Newfoundland who are never excited about anyone I speak to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I could be talking to, you know, Tom Hanks, and they'll be like, yeah, whatever, man. Give it up. What do you think you're better than me? <laughs> um, they are so excited that I'm talking to you. Oh, cool. You have a lot of people who really love this show. How are you feeling? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot to wrap your head around. You yeah. know, for, for all of us, for all of us on the cast, you know, because, um, you know, we, we half expected that, that critics would come along and, and tee off on us. You know, it's a, it's a, a fairly low brow show. Um, but I think it, it has, it has different elements that, that kind of protect us. We've got, we've got some soul and some heart in there and it's a tough show at the end of the day as, as well. You know, that was a big priority to me that, that the show be tough. What, what, what does that mean? Uh, just stakes. Stakes, there are, uh, there are stakes in a small town like where I grew up in Listowel, Ontario. I, I like to say, you know, getting your your butt kicked is is a, a concern on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was important for me to to have that kind of uh, in, interwoven uh, with, with, with the humor. You know, there had to be stakes in a small town because that's what life is like there. Listowel, Ontario is a very specific part of the country um, and, and letter can... <clears throat> Letter Kenny is is largely based on on that town and, and the life you had growing up, and so you'd be excused if you thought that only people from that area would really get it. Mm-hmm. But like I mentioned, friends of mine in, in Newfoundland love this show. Friends of mine in Quebec love this show. I know people who have procured it in America in ways they probably shouldn't have procured it to mm-hmm. watch it. What do you think the the universal appeal of this show is? Um. Our, our our show has teeth, and I think that um, uh, I think that that's something that sets us apart. We're the furthest thing from a safe comedy. Uh, there's a lot of negativity on our show. A lot of the humor is is is, uh, is negative negative negativity driven. Uh, we take the piss out of each other. I guess is is the long and short of it. Um, that's something that. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of networks would would ask you to pump the brakes on, mm-hmm. uh, but we're lucky that in our partnership uh, with with Bell and with Crave TV, I think that the show has only gotten filthier when it's transitioned from the YouTube uh, series to uh, uh, to television. But it's it's interesting, you know, you, you talk about like uh, who the show appeals to, and even when the web series first came on. We couldn't believe how many people from the southern states and all over the states uh, were really attaching to it. Uh, but Australia, really? Got, yeah, we got a lot of people, and you know, we don't condone how they get access to the show. <laughs> but yeah, but we, they can we send you it. a check to your address. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you that. We'll give out the address at the end of the show. <laughs> talk, you'll put it along the bottom of the screen here. Maybe. <laughs> a one one nine hundred number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that you think it's a really negative show, and I guess it is. I mean, you know, I think the way that a lot of people speak to one another when they kind of insult one another is largely with a lot of heart mm-hmm. or, or, or not, meant, not meant. Because when I watch the show, sure, there's a lot of chirping, a lot of giving people a hard time. However, I don't feel bad when I watch it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, and I think a lot of shows can be so negative that you, when you turn it off, you feel bad about yourself or you feel bad that you watched it, but you never get this feeling with Letter Kenny. What's, what's the balance you strike there? Um, you know, uh, one of one of my favorite comedies ever would be uh, Summer Heights High. Uh, I, that never, was, I never uh, did watch it. Uh, an HBO show uh, by this dude called Chris Lilly. He plays three different characters on it. Uh, and they did something similar and, and something that I, I thought set them apart. They did the same thing on Eastbound and Down is that – uh, they always made sure that they showed the soft underbelly of the character after they flipped out. You know, uh, they went to those places, they went to those negative places, they called people names, they didn't necessarily bully people because that's not funny. You know, we had to make sure we weren't crossing that line. Um, but if if uh, somebody pokes you, you're ready with a rebuttal mm-hmm. and your rebuttal is warranted because they started it. It's that simple playground logic. You is, know? Is, is it something you're keeping your eye on when you're, when you're writing dialogue, when you're shooting it, that, hey, that might, that's turning into bullying. Now. Yes. That's a, that's a little too much. Yep. I write it with a uh, uh, dude from Montreal called Jacob Tierney, who's uh, the director of it as well. Uh, he's very conscious of it. I'm very conscious of it because, you know, um, it can, it can very quickly drift into the unfunny territory. And um, yeah, there's, there's nothing funny about bullying so if somebody's going to come at somebody with something it's always warranted you know yeah. either you know uh, said something to a dude's sister or, or ran a hockey player's goalie something very simple just a no fly zone you know you have to respond so that's kind of our approach there 
Listowel, Ontario. That's right, Listowel. Yeah, Listowel, Ontario. The inspiration for Letter Kenny. Have have the folks back home seen it? Uh, oh yeah. How do yeah. they feel about it? Well, I, I I like to say that the the biggest Letter Kenny fans on planet Earth are are in Listowel, and I can honestly say there's there's only been like one time that uh, Mum said that she got kind of a backhanded comment at at the bank. Uh, some, something along the lines of, like you know, you know, it's about us, right? But uh, like all, all my pals are back in it. You know, last year at uh, Patty Fest in in Listowel is a big, uh, big Irish festival on uh, the the week of St Patrick's Day. You know, like there's an arm wrestling competition. They yeah. get like bands like you know Sloan came one year, oh, yeah. um, and you know they all rock their Letterkenny T-shirts at these big Patty Fest parties, and that's that's really cool to me because Patty Fest was such a huge deal growing up. You know, it was the biggest, the biggest party of the year in Listowel. So, knowing that uh, the show is getting repped there is is pretty cool for me. You're getting a lot of folks coming up to you saying stuff like, "Hey, man, is that me? Is that character me?" I've 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 had it a couple times just with names. You know, like uh, uh, my my pal Stuart. Uh, uh, said to me uh, because we have a character named Stuart. He's like, uh, he's like, love, love the name of your lead skid, stuff like that. Um, and another pal's, uh, <laughs> another pal's sister-in-law uh, who worked at a bar said to me, she's like, is the bartender based on me? And I said, no, you know, I'd never, um, never make it that close to home. And you know, uh, my parents still live there. Business is still there. I go back quite a bit. And um, you know, as as much as it's uh, a lot like uh, my life growing up in Listowel. It's not uh, directly uh, based on Listowel. I lived in a lot of small towns playing hockey and, and picked up a lot of that stuff along the way. So it's uh, yeah, a melting pot. You're listening to Q. Uh, I'm talking to Jared Kiso, the co-creator and star of the series Letterkenny. And the series is made up of three groups of people in Letterkenny. There's the kind of the, the jocks, the skids. I guess they were, the other piece folks would call them the hicks maybe. Yeah. Um, back home we have the jocks, the preps, the Skeets and the Scullies. Wow, Skeets and Scullies. The so you... Skeets are kind of like hard tickets. They're the fellows who were wearing Columbia jackets and smoking in the back of the school. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that, you know? that sounds like a skid hybrid to me, but yeah, what's it? And no, a Scully, a Scully uh, was like, the. Fo- I think they're closer to your skids, the folks who wore like Marilyn Manson t-shirts, oh. painted their nails black. Okay. Um, wore Metallica t-shirts yeah. you know, and smoked a little bit farther away from the skeets. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> when you scullies. were, yeah, scullies. That's my yeah, favorite one, man. It's a good one. Yeah, it is. And I still, I'll still, if I see my buddy wearing like a an old Pantera shirt, I go, "What do you have, Scully?" Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Which of these groups of folks were, were you identifying uh, with growing up in Listowel? Well, I played hockey uh, uh, coming up. I played competitive hockey through high school, and I even left my high school to play um, uh, at uh, in Strathroy. And so I went to high school in, in London for a couple years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say I, I most identified uh, with with the hockey players, but I was friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I worked with uh, a lot of the Hicks at uh, our family sawmill, and I did pig barn installation for for a summer and stuff. So you meet these guys, and uh, you know, you're always taking the piss out of each other. I remember uh, I was in a crew when we were doing this pig barn installation, and uh, you know, I'll take a shot at the Hicks every chance I get, and they'll take a shot at me every yeah. chance I get. But we're all buddies, you know. It's friendly. And we're driving down the lane way to uh, our boss's place. He had to pick something up. And there's this field, uh, th- this field beside. And so I just look over at, at my pal Craig Gibson and I was like, nice field of wheat there, eh, Craig? And there's just silence in the truck. And he looks over, he's like, that's Barley Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I retell that story all the time, you know. But uh, that's that that's kind of the accent back home with with a lot of those guys. But um, you know, these guys are are guys. You know, have got like a handshake that'll lift you right off the ground. Yeah. Um, these guys work hard. Uh, they're a work hard, play hard bunch. And you know, it was it was, uh, it was really uh, important for me to to have that accuracy in uh, in uh, in the Hicks and in Letter Kenny. It's funny you mentioned that you can you can give it out to people as long as you get it back and then there's, there's a there's a genuine respect. There's one exception to that on your show, which is the the hockey players when they enter senior hockey. You just I don't want to give too much away, but mm-hmm. they were in junior hockey for a while. Now they go to senior hockey and they learn pretty early on that it's not that easy to chirp people in senior hockey. Yeah, yeah, certainly. You know what? Uh, uh, Riley and Jonesy, who were played by Dylan Playfair and Andrew Herr, I never intended for them to be kind of that that goofy. Um, 
but what they brought to set, it just worked so well. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that if, if there's any crew that's that's in Letter Kenny, that's a hit more than any more than any other crew, it'd be the hockey players. They're just going over so so well. So you can't argue with that. You know, when they come to set, we're just laughing. We're on the we're on the floor every time they talk. But I thought it'd be interesting in season two if I brought in some guys uh, who were a little more physically imposing, who were those kind of like mean bully straight edge hockey players and I just wanted to see how that that would play off did you come across these guys when you were playing in the western Ontario oh hockey yeah league? yeah yeah big time these guys are, are are all over the place you know you're you're scared of them um and it's 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 not unlike you know like working in a crew at a sawmill or or, or doing anything else you've got the veterans, the older guys who want to get results, and the way that they get it is by cracking the whip a bit, is, is is by bullying a little bit. And you learn because, you know, you don't want to be bullied. You don't want to be the weakest link, so you get up there, and then the young guys come in under you, and then it's your job yeah. <laughs> to pay that forward. So, well, you know, One of the defining aspects of the show, one of the first things you notice is, is the slang. Um, how much of it... Are you, and we're going to get into some of slang. We're going to do a little slang off later, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. Are, um, how much of this slang is coming from Listowel, Ontario and the and the towns around that you were playing hockey in? How much of this is, are you making up yourself? I'd say it's about 50-50. Yeah. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of contagious dialogue back home. Uh, and that's that's really the foundation of, of you know, where Jacob and I, uh, where Jacob and I write from. Um, that's our, our biggest inspiration is is the contagious dialogue, the quotables. You just hear so much gold. When when you go home, like uh, uh, pitter patter, let's get at her is uh, is a thing that uh, the captain of my team in uh, Strathroy, Mike Hooker, used to say all the time. And mm-hmm. of course, it gets shortened down to pitter patter. And then uh, we've got uh, another example of that is our our first AD. Uh, Megan Banning last season is from Newfoundland. She said one thing that that they say there is uh, uh, lots to do, lobster stew. Yeah. And so all the time we're just hollering out, you know, lobster stew, lobster stew. So you know, you pick up those things and they go in the movie. And I'm glad. I'm glad we got in there. So um, let's do it. You're listening to Q. I'm talking to Jared Kiso, co-creator and star of the hit series Letterkenny. You're going to walk me through some Letterkenny slang today. And I think it's only fair as we do that. We're gonna. I'll share some Newfoundland slang with you. Great. We'll go shot for shot. So I'll say. I'll say the term that you use in Letter Kenny. You tell me what it is. Okay. And I'll try to give you the Newfoundland equivalent of that. Great. How do you feel about that? I love it. All right. Yeah. So the first one is uh, ten ply. Ten ply. Uh, well, uh, ten ten ply uh, re, re, uh, refers to how uh, soft somebody is emotionally, and we use that <laughs> in uh, the hockey players episode of the original web series. And it almost didn't make it in. I'm like, this will go this will go over people's heads. I don't think enough people will understand that two ply is soft toilet paper. So ten ply would just be ridiculously soft and possibly soft. Uh, and it almost didn't make it in. It ended up being the most quoted uh, line from from the thing. Maybe even you know got us in in the door at Bell. Um, but yeah, that's that that's what it refers to. Is I, I think back soft. back home we'd say you're a sook, S O O K. She's learned a ton of new ones. Yeah, today. you're like that's you're great. a sook, you sookie, or you'd say you're 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 a kindergarten baby. A <laughs> uh, kindergarten baby. Yeah, yeah, we used to say too. that one too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Second one is uh, electric lettuce. Oh, electric lettuce, uh, electric lettuce. Uh, the Johnny Red Eye, uh, one from uh, my pal uh, uh, Trevor Risk, the free form herbal jazz. I like that a lot. Just uh, just other ways to say uh, marijuana. My buddy, I have thought about this for a long time, and there's a bunch of them, but I want to credit my buddy Pat Ward, hmm. who I saw him once say to someone. Nah, man, I don't touch the laser lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> you can have laser lettuce, man. Yeah, it is all yours. Good, good, uh, good alliteration there. My favorite device. Tilly time. Tilly time. Speaking uh, of alliteration. Yes, uh, Tilly time. Uh, this is uh, one uh, one of our cast members, Tyler Johnson's favorite. Um, we'll often say it as a joke, just kind of walking into a bar like there's going to be trouble. There never is. Rarely is. Uh, but uh, uh, in hockey, uh, another word for fight is tilt. And then that's been shortened down to Tilly. And if it's time for a tilt, it's it's Tilly time. So it's a fight on the ice. I think all we got for that is scrap. Yeah, but you say scrap too, right? Yep, yep. yep. But then the the Donny Brook. Yeah, uh, a Donny Brook's a little different because a Donny Brook refers to a scrap involving more than two people. So that would be a line brawl, I'd say, is a Donny Brook or, or a bench brawl is 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 a Donny Brook. So there are more people involved. I think we'd say like uh, all hands scrap. 
All hands. Yeah, all hands. I was scrapping all hands. Yeah. Oh, man, all hands were scrapping out there today, man. Did you see the buys? They all were... hands throwing hands. Yeah, all hands yeah. throwing hands. <laughs> you know, I want a writing credit on this show, man. Uh, Texas size 10-4. Okay, Texas size 10-4 is, uh, I credit my pal Dave Westra with that one. It's the first time I heard it. I think it's pretty standard trucker talk uh, over the CB radio. There's a lot of milk truckers in around Listowel, and, uh, you know, the odd time you'd go for a ride uh, uh, with, with a buddy and his dad, and you'd hear different things over the CB radio. So I think that that's a, a popular uh, uh, trucker way to say understood. My buddy Ed was telling me yesterday that uh, where he's from in the Goulds, just outside of Newfoundland, it's kind of the farm country outside of St. John's, just outside of St. John's. They've started using Texas size 10-4 because okay. of the show. That's made, oh, it, yeah. it's made it in. Hey, good. We would just say nose. Nose. You'd be like, man, um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm going down to the store today. I'm going to pick up some milk for mother. Oh, yes, man, nose. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, of course, of course you are. Or I know you are. Or yeah. I, I know that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I, geez, I took I took French class the other day and I bombed like nose, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, man, nose. Nose, man, nose. We also <laughs> one of my favorites is my buddy Andrew says uh, he calls all video games tapes. So he'll be like, man, want to come over and play hockey tapes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about uh, Sandos? Uh, Sandoz is one of these silly, <laughs> it's just, just one of these silly abbreviations that uh, kids on skates are, are using these days. They kind of just uh, abbreviate everything. Sando is short for sandwich, Appy is short for appetizer, Nappy is short for nap mm -hmm. or napkin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hundy P instead of 100% now, that's, that, that's the lingo the kids are running with and I, I just find it endlessly hilarious so happy to exploit it where I can the one I hate in your show is Pracky when the when the hockey players say man want to get that after Pracky I, I something inside of me dies yeah yeah I'm not I'm not a fan of that one either <laughs> but if we're staying true to form uh, yeah. I think back home there's no I asked around a lot this is the hardest one and the closest I got was my buddy Dave Bridger who's from Labrador said there used to be this meal they would serve at the restaurant in, in Lab City mm. and he had restaurant in quotes and it was uh, two slices of white bread with gravy over it, and they call it bread dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that that can't be more than two bucks, though. I would yeah. say I'd say yeah. they, they knocked it up to five bucks. It's Labrador okay. man, it's hard to get stuff up there. Yeah, you say you say Bridger. I've got a pal, Daniel Bridger from uh, from Newfoundland. I know he's, Danny Bridger. You yeah. know Danny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's doing some writing in uh, in Montreal right now. Yeah, see this him is, from time to time. This is the most this is the most Canadian interview I've ever done in my life. <laughs> and the last one is uh, Pert Nair. Pert Nair. Uh, I went to school with Danny Bridger's sister, Emily. Okay. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's in film now, too. She's doing, yeah, she's doing some stuff. Yeah, back in St. John's, yeah. 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 Pert Nair. Pert Nair. Everyone's uh, laughing. Everyone is laughing. Steve's <laughs> laughing at my <laughs> this acquaintance. Yeah, yeah. Pert Nair is, uh, a, I think, a fairly specific regional dialect to uh, our, our area of Ontario uh, because, uh, you know, you certainly don't say... Uh, uh, I pretty near put my truck into the ditch. You'd say pert near put my truck in into the ditch or, or uh, pret near. Um, I mean, a, a, a good way to start that too would be uh, uh, to get somebody's attention. You say like, do you want to know what? But you'd say it so fast. That it's almost like, do you want to what? Mm -hmm. Pert near put my truck into the ditch today. Mm -hmm. And yeah, today it would be more like today. Today. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday. I'd say like I... Yeah, I park my rig ha handy to the ditch. Yeah, handy, handy. Yeah, you know, I guess instead of ditch, you could say rhubarb too. Put her in the rhubarb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a good one. Handy or broadside is another one. Handy or broadside. He went up broadside him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not broadside him? Yeah, these are good. Jared, like this is be. so much fun for me. Thanks for coming <laughs> in, man. Hey, no sweat. Thank you for having me.